basketball's best shots tonight at 11.45. Arena in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Big East basketball on CBS, a sellout crowd on hand as the Georgetown Hoyas take on the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bert Lundquist, and welcome to Pittsburgh. This young Panther team comes in having lost three of their last four, their last two in a row. They're only 11 and 10 for the year. But in contrast, Georgetown comes in on a heck of a roll, 18 and two for the season, Eight and one in Big East and number two in the country. And I know, Tommy Heinsohn, you're most impressed. You've got to be impressed with Georgetown because they got such great depth that they throw pace and people at you. They become very aggressive on defense and they have great guards and small people that can do unusual things like Charles Smith right here. Get up on the front end of the press, really create havoc there and then hustle back just when you think you're going to end up with a layup. Come up with a steal and boy does Charles Smith head to the hoop up the other end. One of the factors that of course allows Georgetown this aggressive nature is the presence of the freshman Alonzo Mourning on the court. You've got that exactly right. But one of the problems for Georgetown uh, for uh, Pitt however is that Alonzo Mourning intimidated the two big guys of Pitt with plays just like this where he will be inside guarding the bucket and has his hands down very unusual style to shot block does not present a target to the shooter by putting his hand up in the air so the shooter can shoot over it or around it it's like the tongue of an iguana flicking out there and snapping at a fly that reminds me a great deal of my former teammate Bill Russell had the same quickness and agility and intelligence and to know when to go for the block and save it so we could come up the other end for layups Alonzo Mourning and the Georgetown Hoyas against the Pittsburgh Panthers, live on CBS. CBS Sports coverage of college basketball is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPV. The U.S. Army, where you get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And by Coors Light, there's no slowing down with the Silver Bullet, the best light beer for a good long time. It's easy to see why Mazda truck owners are starting to toot their own horn. They've got enough reasons. Mazda trucks are so reliable, they've been rated number one in customer satisfaction for three straight years. Mazda has the best warranty in the truck business. Nobody else can say that. And when you figure this sporty SE5 is priced close to the other guy's base trucks, what's left to say? Only this. Now get $750 cash back from Mazda at participating dealers. If you want to land a good job, you have to know what most employers want. Like how to motivate yourself, how to lead others, how to perform under pressure. You can learn all these things in the Army. So no matter what career you choose, you'll really be ready to take off. American Originals. Have a nice cold course with a friend of yours. It's an American Original. If you've got yourself a car and you've got yourself a house, you could be on your way to some very nice savings. Because with Allstate Homeowners Insurance and an excellent driving record, you could save up to 15% on your auto insurance. And 15% could mean big money for all the important little things. What a day. The Allstate Auto Advantage. Another reason. A member of the Sears Financial Network. 16,600 on hand as Georgetown makes its annual visit to Pittsburgh. The game played at the Civic Arena. John Thompson, of course, the head coach of the Georgetown Hoyas. And a team that is filled with depth. He starts Jaron Jackson 
who has really improved his shooting this year at one forward spot. Jonathan Edwards starts at the power forward, but he'll give way to John Turner and Alonzo Mourning, the outstanding freshman at the center. And in the backcourt, great experience in Charles Smith, the Olympian, and he's joined in the backcourt by Dwayne Bryant. The head coach of the Pittsburgh Panthers, now in his third year, 43-year-old Paul Evans, and he starts five sophomores. Brian Shorter in his first full year after sitting out a year ago. Darrell Porter is the uh, other forward. And at center, Bobby Martin, who thrilled this throng by singing the national anthem a few moments ago and did quite well. And in the backcourt, two more sophomores, Sean Miller, the point guard, and the shooting guard, uh, and one of the uh, outstanding stars, Jason Matthews, for the Pittsburgh Panthers. They come in 11 and 10. They have lost their last two in a row in Big East play. And Pittsburgh is struggling. Georgetown won the first game back in January at the Cap Center. And indeed, they have won six of the last seven games between these two. Our officiating crew today, Mickey Crowley, Jack Cannon, and Jim Burr. And we are set to go. Morning wins the tip. Charles Smith controls. Sean Miller will guard Smith. And a man by Pittsburgh, and this is just the type of defense that Georgetown loves. Jaron Jackson dished off to Jonathan Edwards, who missed the dunk, and here comes Pittsburgh. Big dilemma for Pittsburgh. Do we run against them and wear ourselves out, or do we slow it down and really have tough shooting opportunities? Jason Matthews cans a three-pointer. Morning. How about that for range for the 6 10 freshman? There is no doubt that this team can run and really capitalize on their big people scoring any place on the court. Tommy, here's the Georgetown pressure. They usually start out with a zone press, and you got to have a good formula offense to beat that. Nice pump fake by Porter and Dash Matthews to Bobby Martin. And it's a 5 2 Pittsburgh lead. Georgetown will come at you on every single opportunity off rebounds. They'll try to run you up the court on made baskets. Their half court offense is suspect. That shot missed. Here comes Pittsburgh pushing the ball up the court. Porter all the way off the glass, way off the glass. And the ball is stripped away from shorter. Dwayne Bryant feeds it back to Jaron Jackson for two. Too strong. Tip controlled by the Panthers. It's the, going to be up and down for a while. Pittsburgh forcing the tempo. Sean Miller, he's been in a horrid shooting stump the last week or so. Bobby Martin fouled underneath. Our strength of the pit offense is really shorter and Bobby Martin. They were totally intimidated in the last ball game by the, the mere presence of morning. Jonathan Edwards out, and John Turner, who had a career game against Pittsburgh the first time out, is into the lineup. He wears number 52. And Bobby Martin at the free throw line. He matched up beautifully against uh, Brian Shorter. It was muscle against muscle. But the key guy is shooting the free throw for Pittsburgh right now. I think he's the guy that's going to have one of his great games. That Big Ten is going to go down to the wire. LSU knocks off Tennessee in a high-scoring game. Oklahoma State is playing well. Our score is 5-2 as Martin misses both free throws. Jackson got it. Off a missed foul shot, baby. Get back quick. And again, the zone pressure employed by Georgetown. Boy, and do they disguise where the openings are. They don't really rely on stealing the ball on traps. They want you to throw that second pass, and then they swoop in and pick it off. Matthews for three more. He is the man that was held in check down in the cap center could not get his outside shot off. Matthews averaging 16 points per game, and he's got six of the eight Pittsburgh points. 8-4, Pittsburgh leads. Over the back, Bobby Martin draws the foul. Very smart approach by Georgetown to attack on the half-court offense as much as possible. The two big guys of Pitt. Pittsburgh does not have a lot of depth sitting there on the bench. Essentially, Pittsburgh is a six-man team. Rod Brooken will enter as the sixth man, and they're woefully short after that. In contrast, Georgetown will play ten players at a minimum. Here's Jackson for three right on. Well, if he starts hitting against that zone three defense points. like he did just Jaren then, Jackson. that's going to cause big problems for Pitt. They're hoping that zone defense will change the tempo of the game in their favor. 
And Georgetown has not really been known to be an exceptional outside shooting team. Porter, no, way off the mark. Shorter can't handle the rebound, tries to knock it off Smith, and he does so. Heads up play by Brian Shorter. It sure was. He's a sophomore, but he plays a little bit uh, more mature than a sophomore. Jason Matthews inbounds, Darrell Porter. Underneath, Bobby Martin fights hard, and he'll shoot two more. I'll tell you, these two guys the last time, particularly this man, Bobby Martin kind of stood around and was in total awe of Alonzo Mourning, and really, in essence, became a spectator. They're hoping that he will become very active on the offensive glass or perhaps give him the ball and let him go at morning. Going at morning, though, is a tough job. Martin gets one. He's now one of three. Duke knocks off Maryland by 26. And Kansas State over Nebraska by 14 in the Big Eight. Martin gets them both. You know, the last ball game, Pitt really executed mechanically beautifully, just couldn't shoot. Off the glass, Bryant gets two. Fast break off a made free throw. Watch out. <laughs> Pittsburgh quickly across the timeline. They'll go into their half-court set now. Darrell Porter. They've got Sean Miller hiding down along the baseline left side. Matthews, nice pick and roll, but it's too strong. And a substitution now. Mark Hillman makes his first appearance. Here's a, a young man who was a two-year starter until this year, and back spasms plus other strength has forced him into a backup role. And he's really been an outstanding shooter for them. Second leading scorer, and uh, he can hit that outside shot, which will really be helpful against any kind of zone defense. Shorter comes over to help on morning, and there's the stuff. He has got all the off the Murray dance steps down for a low post game. I'll tell you, he knows what he's doing down there for a freshman. Trap, Tillman, they get rid of it to Matthews. 11 to 10, Georgetown with its first lead of the ball game. And scored the last four. Hoyas have a two and a half game edge in Big East play. Uh, they're really denying the inside play of Shorter. Turner is fronting them, really making it difficult for a good passer like Miller even to see Shorter inside. Porter kicks it back out, nine on the shot clock. Sean Miller tries to drive. Bobby Martin over morning, short. Rebound, Georgetown, Mark Tillman. Oh, and Matthews was right there, but just mistimed that rebound. Jackson with the entry pass into John Turner. Try the trap on him. Jackson saves it. 15, 18 to go first half. One point Georgetown lead. Miller on Charles Smith. For three, right there. On a pick and roll. They played it beautifully, and Smith then just sat right behind the pick and launched that three-pointer. Georgetown on a 7 nothing run now, and they've hit 6 of 9 from the field. Pretty interesting they're having Martin bring the ball up against Alonzo Morning. Look at the intimidation factor and a nice job of adjusting by Shorter. Lots of points by Shorter that time. Threw a fake at Alonzo Morning. That's one of the ways to really confuse the shot blocker. Now Brian told us last night he's going to try and show him the ball a little more today. How about that shot, Kilman? That's what Tillman was doing last season before that back started acting up. Now they're going to show man-to-man -man pressure defense. Jackson on Darrell Porter. Good, Darrell Porter. Alonzo Morning switched out, and Martin headed right to the hoop without uh, hesitation whatsoever. So if he had, if Porter had missed, Martin was right there for the tip. Georgetown has hit seven of ten in the first half. Pittsburgh five of eight. John Turner sat out last year as a transfer from Allegheny Community College. Along the sideline, five second call. Did he call time and time? Let's see. Yes, timeout. Timeout, 13.48 to go. First half. It's Georgetown by two. Attention, Georgetown bus driver. 
The airport's almost ready, Bob. Another minute, Bob. Any second now, Bob. With all the problems you face at work, your office equipment shouldn't be one of them. Tomorrow, for sure, Bob. Rico, we don't let your office get in the way of your business. Hurry and you'll make it. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, you're back. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own, the kind of moves that made him a first-string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing, and it shows. We love Thanks. to fly, and it shows. You'd think it would be easy to find a high-quality small sedan that's reliable, durable, and comfortable. And maybe it is. But to find one that's also sophisticated enough to be all kinds of fun to drive, well, that's a little harder to find. But I can save you a lot of chasing around. All you gotta do is corner a Mazda 323. And right now, you can get $400 cash back from Mazda. See your dealer today. One card lets you call from anywhere in your calling area to virtually anywhere in the world and pay the same as if you were calling from your desk. So now you can have the biggest office in town because the town is your office. The MCI card. It is America's business card. It's the superstars of NASCAR in an all-out 50-mile sprint. The Bush Clash tomorrow on an All-Star Sunday on CBS Sports. <laughs> going to see a, a great play by Brian Shorter right now. One of the things you got to do against the shot blocker is get him to commit to the air before you release the ball. He waited just a little bit too long and allowed Morning to come back down and Morning got a piece of it, but he's got he's on the right page on how he, you should try to get a shot off against Morning. Both teams hitting quite well. There's Tillman. That's off the mark. And Winston gets the tip over to John Turner for two more. Bobby Winston just in the lineup for John Thompson's bunch. Winston is one of those great players at the forward spot, has the speed, the good hands, the experience to know what to do in this defense. That is the third three-pointer for the sophomore, Jason Matthews. They did not get open shots down at the cap center. They are today. Bobby Winston set the lineup now for Georgetown. Winston. Mark Tillman and Charlie Smith join Alonzo Morning and John Turner. That's off of Pittsburgh. Darrell Porter, it'll be Georgetown's the inbound. And for Pittsburgh, the same five. Again, Brooklyn will, in all likelihood, be the only sub. Charles, Charles Smith for two. And Charles Smith did not have a real good game in the last encounter these two had. And Georgetown still beat them pretty badly. Matter of fact, Charlie Smith just hit one of six. Yeah, oh, what a pass. What a great feed. I tell you, Miller was under total control, read the defense, spotted the weak side wide open as Georgetown had overcommitted their entire defense to the ball. Both teams continue hitting at a torrid pace here in the first half. 20 to 19, 12 35. Pittsburgh 11 and 10 for the year. Alley oop for morning. And a stop. There you go, turnabout fair play, a little up fake, and Martin went to the sky. 22-19. That's six for Alonzo Morning, who is averaging about 13 a game. Nice pass again from Sean Miller. Darrell Porter alters the shot just right. Now Darrell Porter is a necessary basketball player this afternoon. He's got to have a hot offensive game. He's got to shoot well. And he can be streaky. Pittsburgh with 21 points already. They trailed by one. The first time the two teams met, Kent had 19 points at the half. There's Morning, and Shorter comes out to help on him. Double dribble. Very anxious that time. He had the opening, but like a freshman, didn't know how to use it. 11.46 to go in the first half. You might expect a guy who flies a jet like this to drive a jet like this. The Mazda MX-6 GT. If you also expect it to fly through the wide open spaces, you're right. But you probably don't expect to find all this wide open space inside. I guess that makes it the one sports coupe which flies in the face of convention. Now, special incentives mean you can save up to $500. See your dealer today. Yo! 
This is Mars Blackman, and this is my main man, Michael Jordan. And this is a pair of pipes Ed Jordan from Nike. This is something you can buy. And this is a patented, vicious, high flying 360 slam dunk. This is something you cannot do. Let me repeat myself. This you can buy. You cannot do this. Can, can, can. thing you want to do is slow it down. So come on into Coors Light, the great light beer for a good long time. It's the right beer now. Paradise, Thursday, Wild West. You're going to see them attack the ball. This is aggressive offense. Over here, they overcommit to the ball. Everybody with a a dark jersey over the line, and it opens it up for a beautiful pass from Sean Miller. That's heads-up offense, finding the open man. Georgetown, a deep team, 10 players averaging nine or more minutes a game, and they've made another substitution now of Jaron Jackson is back in. That's one of the real contrasts in this game, the, the lack of depth by Pittsburgh and the extraordinary depth by the Georgetown team. And the one they really try and work on is Sean Miller because he is the the point guard of this ball club they try to they wore him out in the last ball game and they're trying to do the same thing this afternoon final score in the southwest conference smu wins it they've been losing players right and left memphis state over south carolina 63 48 larry finch's team with the victory today this is sean miller entry pass into shorter pump fake and he traveled yep he showed him the ball and morning reacted he, all he had to do is keep that pivot foot down but he leaned right by him and that's pretty wily play for a sophomore might be an upset Tom we played nine minutes and no shot block yet <laughs> maybe the longest stretch for Georgetown this year it was it is such a factor with morning in the tempo when he comes in that's morning they double team him one of the things that John Thompson said he wants morning to learn to do is to pass the ball well, he knows that morning over his career is going to face a lot of double teams, so he's got to make those evaporate around morning by having him pass the ball back outside. That shot for three by Jackson, not there, and the foul on John Turner, committed against Jason Matthews. A sophomore wide body. I'll tell you, he's going to bang you. He's going to hurt. That's the fourth team foul on Georgetown. And again, the press employee. And man to man, and they'll really make Miller work to bring the ball up the court. And you watch, once he gets rid of it, they're going to have a tough time getting it back to him. Darrell Porter, yes. 23-22, Pittsburgh back on top. And if he gets on a streak, that really could mean trouble for Georgetown. Six assists already for Sean Miller. <laughs> Morning, adjusted his shot or had it fly off his hand. And here comes Sean Miller. Brian Shorter, two more no. And Darrell Porter is fouled. There is no awe in the Pittsburgh game plan today. I'll tell you, they are really hustling. They're going to see right now the double team that forms around Turner. He spots it nicely. A little lay down pass. And as Morning just lost control, had an easy two points, but couldn't hold on to the ball. One thing strikes me early on, Tommy. Pittsburgh has kept out of foul trouble, as they must. Only one team foul on the Panthers thus far. And Matthews, his fourth three-pointer. I will tell you, they really did not allow him to get the ball in the last ball game. And as soon as that ball comes to his letters, it's up and away. Jason Matthews with 12 points. And a four-point Pittsburgh lead. That's the second team foul on Pittsburgh. It goes against Sean Miller. I remember last week when we did the Pitt-Syracuse game, and Pittsburgh really hung in there. In fact, went ahead of Syracuse. But there is a fatigue factor that develops in this Pittsburgh team. And as soon as Paul Evans has to go to the bench, he's got problems. Dwayne Bryant back into the lineup for Georgetown. Now that is the fifth 
Substitution Thompson has made that shot for three by Dwayne Bryant. Bryant for three. And it's a 26-25 ball game, 9.40 to go first half. Pittsburgh hasn't gone to the bench yet. When they do, it'll be Rod Brooking, and that's about it. I tell you, Pittsburgh is playing very intelligently, and Matumbo, <laughs> Matumbo in the lineup gets his first block. He had 12 in a game earlier this year. Jaron Jackson, back to Smith. So, Matumbo playing for the first time in the ball game has replaced Morning. Underneath, Anthony Allen misses. Boy, they come at you in waves, and here comes Pittsburgh. Matthews has the hot hand. He's at four three-pointers. Put down the front end of the landing trap. Touchdown. I'm telling you, the reserves are coming. Big reserve right here, and I mean big, is Matumbo. And he can go up and wait till the ball is released. You're not going to be able to stick it over the top of him too easily. Listed in the press guide at 6'11", conservatively estimated to be 7'3". A little psychology by John Thompson. <laughs> now, most coaches say, we got a guy who's 7'6", and he's only 6'8". <laughs> Trying to scare him, but John's got more than enough people to scare the, the opposition. Porter! Georgetown timeout. The Great American Race, the Daytona 500. You're looking at the most grueling automotive test of the year. To simply survive, you've got to be good. But to emerge as 4x4 of the year, you've got to be the best. Toyota's SR5 V6 is the 4x4 of the year. Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? Someone believes he's guilty. I'm prosecuting this case. Someone knows he's innocent. My client's had a tough eight years behind bars. Someone got away with murder. Until now. True Believer. Rated R. Special advance preview tonight at Select Theater. Nothing's rougher on a man's face than shaving. That's why there's Skin Bracer. It's more than an aftershave. It soothes, cools, tightens pores, so it's good for your skin. Thanks. I needed that. Skin Bracer Aftershave. Bye, men. If you want to move ahead in any career, you have to know what most employers want. Like how to work with a team, how to handle responsibility, how to take on a tough job and see it through. You can learn all these things in the Army. So when you do set off on the road to success, you'll already be in the driver's seat. Sixteen thousand six hundred on hand at Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, and they are roaring right now as the Panthers lead. Turnovers: Georgetown one, Pitt three. Blocks: McKembo has the only one thus far in the game. John Thompson has gone to his bench. Pittsburgh hasn't. Jason Matthews four three pointers to lead with twelve points. Well, Georgetown relies on the fatigue factor, and you just cannot play Georgetown with five or six people unless they're robots and you can plug them in at halftime and juice them up uh, you, because they play such an up-tempo style of play they'll just sap the stamina away from you and that usually takes the outside shooting away from uh, any Georgetown opponent coming down in the second half shot clock down under 20 now this is Jaron Jackson Anthony Allen Charles Smith Bryant and Matembo on the lineup so far Smith got it he is some nifty little player, I'll tell you. John Thompson says he's a special guy. He wasn't really slated to play here at Georgetown. He was going to be a fill-in player, one of those practice guys. Now he's one of the stars of the team. And an Olympian. Darrell Porter kicks it out to Rod Brooken, and he misfires. So Paul Evans has gone to his bench now for the first time in the ballgame. Georgetown, oh, what a pass by Smith. Bobby Martin got ball. Hell ball, and it's Pittsburgh. Great hustle play as Allen had really gotten up ahead of everybody in the corner. But you watch Martin with his hustle just go up and put both hands on that ball. 
Possession arrow was pointing Pittsburgh's way. It's 28-27, 7-17 to go, first half. One of the main concerns of the Pitt people is Sean Miller's stamina. They, they think that's one of his weaknesses. Foul is on number 55. Pat foul on Matumbo, number 55. Team foul number six. That's the sixth team foul. And again, John Thompson to the bench as Alonzo Morning comes back in for Dikembe Matumbo. They are deep at every position. They don't even worry about foul. That's right. Now don't people do. fouling out. There's always somebody there that can do a creditable job. John Turner comes in. Sean Miller to Brooklyn for three. Nope. And a whistle under the basket. Brian Shorter picks up the personal. Bert Lundquist, Tom Heinsohn, as we bring you Big East basketball to the Pittsburgh Civic Arena. Heck of a ball game here in the first half, 28-27. Pittsburgh leads it. The lead has seesawed. At the last commercial, Pittsburgh had been hitting 65%, 11 of 17 from the field, and forced down 58%. From the corner for three, no. Martin, nice job of getting position for the rebound. Well, the 2-3 of the 1-2-2 zone of Pittsburgh has caused problems right now for Georgetown. Sean Miller with eight assists already. Gets it back from Bobby Martin. Five sophomores. Now there are four sophomores and a junior in the lineup for Pittsburgh. Shorter with that little baby hook. And he picks up the foul. That's his second. All-Star Sunday tomorrow on CBS. And it begins with the Bush Flash from Daytona at 12 o'clock Eastern Time. NASCAR's season opener as racers compete in this 50-mile 20 lap sprint. That's tomorrow. Jackson, three pointer. Against any zone, Jackson can destroy it when he's got the hot hand. He really is a streaky shooter, but he's becoming more consistent of late. Jason Matthews. He's got four three pointers in the ball game. Georgetown out of their zone into a man to man. Feet underneath is too much. Bobby Martin throws it away, intended for shorter. They really are having problems getting it inside. As a result, Pittsburgh is going to the outside shot, hit four of five. Georgetown, four of six. That is the fourth fifth turnover of the ballgame. But that man to man defense is going to take, out, take away that outside shot. I believe we got Alonzo Morning underneath. No, I think it's shorter. It is shorter again. That's three. Now, uh, that's where that situation, the depth of Georgetown against the depth of Pitt is really going to take its toll. Shorter will have to sit down if he hopes to play the second half. And he's really their most productive inside player. So Darrell Porter replaces Shorter with 534 to go in the half. You might want to mark that spot on the uh, game clock and see what develops from here to halftime. Shorter, the most productive offensive player for Pittsburgh. John Turner with two more. I'll tell you, he is a sweetheart of a player. As big as he is, he's got great quickness, and he's got some real good basketball skills, and knows when to use them. 7 nothing run now for Georgetown. The second 7 nothing run they've had in the first half. Bounce pass. Rod Brookin. No, won't fall. Turner goes out, battles for it. And Darrell Porter picks it up, fights with the double team. Underneath, no. And the intimidation factor works again. Boy, he just leaned into him to make sure that he could try and cut down the, the reaction time in the morning. How about the touch pass on the other end from Charles Smith to John Turner? When coaches talk to you about shot blockers, out of practice, that immediately starts you thinking about changing your shots. And you really do have to play against a good shot blocker in a different way. But there's various things you can do. One of my favorite was to make, go to the basket, not even try and make the basket. Just put it high off the glass like a pass to the guy who was being defended by the shot blocker. 
Here's the intimidation. A small man, Matthews, just leaning into morning, trying to create some space for himself and threw himself off balance in the process. That's an interesting idea to go off the glass as if it's a pass, or it is a pass, in effect. That's right, but most players can't make that adjustment in their mind. Just throw it over the top of that shot blocker and as high off the glass as possible. In fact, it makes him jump even higher. Georgetown on a 9 nothing run. And Pittsburgh has Shorter on the bench. Back out to Sean Miller. And Charles Smith comes out to defend him. Rod Brooken. There's the shot block by Alonzo Morning. Smith at the other end. Dishes left with a scoop pass. You have to at least be the same size as the shot block if you're going to put it in his face. And no way is Brooken close to the size of Morning. Georgetown coming in with 205 block shots. The school record, they're only 12 away from that, and they've drawn a bead on Navy's NCAA record of 233. And at the other end, Jaron Jackson will shoot. And that makes it a 10 nothing run. Brian Shorter to the bench with 534 to go in the first half, having picked up his third personal foul. And he got two of those three fouls, really aggressively going to the, for the rebounds. So a coach can't get too upset. If you're going to take your, your, your one of your big scorers' aggressiveness away underneath the basket, try and tell him don't foul going for a rebound, the guy will just stand there and never do anything. Bobby Winston back into the lineup. Missouri over Kansas. And Notre Dame leading Southern Cal. Florida and Kentucky in a battle in the uh, SEC. And Georgia Tech winning over Wake Forest. 36-28, largest lead in the first half. Brooken kicks it right to Jason Matthews, and look at Dwayne Bryant guard him. Boy, they are tenacious defensively. And they're not even letting him get the ball back. They're just face guarding Matthews now. Bryant, nice spin move. Kicks it out to Bobby Winston. Underneath, Martin and Morning are going at each other. And Charles Smith, the senior playmaker, settles things down. Morning, jump hook, good. And the lead is 10, 38-28. Boy, do they throw some versatility at you. But when they're hitting the outside shot, Georgetown, and, they, and you have to spread your defense, Morning and Turner and all the rest of them can really do damage inside. Jaron Jackson picks up that foul. That's his second. And that'll set Rod Brooken to the line. Rod Brooken is the line. Two shots. Brooken, at one point before the season began, was up above 260. He's now down to 229. But his coach still isn't thrilled with his play this year. No, I, I think he has to make up his mind what kind of price he wants to play to be a, a great basketball player. I think he's got to focus on the motion more than anything else. Uh, he's got great talent, Brooklyn. Got a lot of skills, can hit outside as fearless underneath, and can play both those positions, but he wants, has to want to play it hard. Those free throws end the 13 nothing Georgetown run. A fender bender on the freeway. You? No, a guy, anyone. This is just to show how Wang's integrated image system will handle and claim. Adjuster comes out, takes a picture of the fender, signs off an adjustment, handwritten document, photograph, an image. I'll go back to home office the electronic mail. Touch a button, and you got a data window, text window, image window right in front of you. A guy in the field wants to verify the estimate. Click. The adjuster's handwritten report in the photo are on the screen processed in half the time. That's integrated imaging, and Wang has it. Another example, customer service. A guy calls EBC. After rigorous examination of the Mercedes-Benz 300E, one automotive journal concluded that it may be the best sedan in the world, and another journal called it a nearly spectacular mix of performance and practicality, the Mercedes-Benz 300E. Now that it's astonished the experts, let it astonish you.
and you handled them well. You got taste I can tell by your sluts more pickable. With smoothness and stream in perfect harmony, like the brew that you drink, yeah, that's this quality. Injustice, the anger, the fears, and the men who've seen too much. You're gonna have to be brave here, Captain. But through the madness, some things keep getting hotter. Tour of Duty Tuesday. On the way back to Georgetown Pit, Jim Nance in New York. We're on the road to the final four at halftime. We will have the winner of the NBA's three-point competition from today. And the qualifier for the pole position down at the Daytona International Speedway. We'll also run a check of college basketball's top ten. But for right now, let's send you back to Pittsburgh. And here's Vernon Tommy. 3-10 remaining in the first half. Georgetown, a 13-0 run. Pittsburgh is 0 for 9 in the last five minutes and 21 seconds from the field. Charles Smith with two more. I'll tell you. <laughs> he is really nifty. Keeps his head up. He's like water, you know, seeking a level. If you don't stop it and jam him up, he'll run right down to the ocean. <laughs> 15 to 2 run now for a first down. And watch the, the denial defense. Mark Tillman on Darrell Porter and underneath Bobby Martin. As elbows fly over there, inadvertent elbows. Well, the other thing that makes it so difficult to score against Georgetown in, in the inside is once you make up your mind you're going to do something with morning, they don't give you too much time to think about what you're going to do because they send another guy down there quickly, a guard, to slap at the ball. Back it comes to Sean Miller. Underneath to Bobby Martin. All kinds of problems. And he does get the foul, so he'll foul go to the line. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player for the game for each team. And in their honor, Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. That's coming up a little bit later this afternoon. Bobby Martin back at the line. Young man sang the national anthem for this crowd of 16,000, and he did a great job. He's, he's quite a talented youngster. Once uh, had the lead in a production of Jesus Christ Superstar. In the seventh grade now. Well, but it, it was such a fun experience for him <laughs> that he joined the choir. And it, now he really, truly loves to sing. He got a heck of an ovation here before the game. Hey, Dillman, the most talented guy out there for the pit team is, is really Porter. He won the talent contest at, at one of these holiday tournaments for doing the can-can in a tutu. <laughs> that was down in Tucson at the Fiesta tournament back in December. I guess you get, out, get down to Tucson and... December, you never know what you might try. Kick it out to Sean Miller for three. Nope. And the shooting woes all of a sudden continue for Pittsburgh. Bobby Winston set the lineup now. Tillman and Winston along with Charles Smith, Dwayne Bryant, and Morning. So in a sense, they've got four men who can play guard out there now. Underneath to Alonzo Morning, it's stripped. And taken away, here comes Darrell Porter. Bobby Winston, bounce pass right side, up and in, Jason Matthews. Well, the reason Georgetown has four small players in there is because Shorter is sitting on the bench. And by having the, the four smaller players, boy, they can really get more aggressive on the outside against Matthews, against Miller, against Porter. And even Brooklyn, if he shoots, wander out into the perimeter. Alonzo Morning, Bobby Martin. Kicks it back out to Charles Smith. John said he wants him to think like a point center as a distributor of the ball. Power move, offensive foul. Well, they gave Martin one there, I'll tell you that, because that was what I call Stanislavski defense. <laughs> Straight from the active studio. Now, uh, you look at it. Boy, that is the biggest flop I ever saw, you know. A swoon. Did a Luganus on it, didn't he? Yep. Give him a 10. Matimbo back in. Coming up at halftime, we go back to our New York studios to vote to the final four with Jim Nance. Got a heck of a ball game today, and how about tomorrow? Arizona, Oklahoma tomorrow. Number one against number five. Down in Norman. Lou Dolson and Billy Tubbs. You know who Stanislavski was? I do. Okay, you tell me. 
<laughs> All right, I got He you. was a Russian drama teacher. That's right, and he taught the method. That's right. All right. Marlon Brando and all of those people. Yeah. You know his first name? Now, now you got it. Go ahead. You tell me. I'll, I'll learn from you. This isn't Jeopardy. I'll, I'll save it forever. <laughs> that shot for two. <laughs> I want to say Constantine, but I'll be embarrassed if I'm wrong. Five seconds to go before halftime. Brooklyn, no. They spread the offense on the court, and what an opportunity that time for Smith to lay some speed on Miller. Miller really had no alternative but to end up fouling Smith. Gilbert Johnson comes in now, a junior college transfer for Pittsburgh. Charles Smith, of course, a member of the Olympic team, you think this guy doesn't have the respect of his peers. John Thompson ran his Olympic unit through a thing called suicide drills, wind sprints, back when they were training to go to Seoul. All the guys were gathered around, were completely winded. And John said, you guys select one of your teammates to shoot two free throws. If he makes them both, we'll quit this exercise right now. They selected Charles Smith, and under extreme pressure, he made both free throws, and the guys got the rest of practice off. Say, if he had missed those, he probably would have ended up a little thinner, a little smaller. 44-36, <laughs> with three seconds to go before halftime. Key development in the first half. The foul problems of star Brian Shorter. And John Thompson's team uses a 13-0 run to take the lead. CBS Sports coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Mercedes-Benz was obsessed with safety engineering long before it became fashionable. Perhaps that's why, in a recent insurance industry study of 207 cars, this S-Class Mercedes had the best overall safety record. Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. I'm, I'm sitting there behind my desk. It's 2 o'clock Saturday morning. I look up and the phone system's all lit up. And I call the service company. It's a recording. They only service the phone systems between nine and five weekdays. What are you supposed to do? Close the place up and go to the beach on the weekends? Better yet, call the crooks up. Tell them to take the weekend off. Leave it to the good hands, people. Uh, so you're buying a house, your first house, and between contracts and points and appraisals, it's no wonder you haven't had time to even think about homeowners insurance. But now, with your closing tomorrow and your life savings on the line, protecting the biggest investment you've ever made is raising all kinds of questions. Call Allstate for answers and comforting prices. Another reason. You're in good hands with Allstate. This is CBS. So there's Richie, my twin brother, taking my place at the game. I was cramming for finals, and he only had to warm the bench, like I do. No one can tell us apart. Oh, you guys, I can always tell just by the sound of your voice. <laughs> the color in the voice. Butler, in. The texture of a phrase. That's the uncompromising sound clarity of AT&T. Butler? We take you right there and keep you this close. When it comes to TV, Americans are the world's most adoring fans and knowledgeable critics. So it's not surprising that in a nation of experts, the television of choice comes from the people who've made the most technological innovations in the industry, RCA. Just one reason more Americans buy RCA video equipment than any other. RCA, number one with the toughest critics in the world. Why did the parent fly the coop? Monday at 4.30. Welcome to the road to the Final Four. I'm Jim Nance back in our New York control room, and let's get you up to date on college basketball top ten scores. First of all, third-ranked Missouri leading with six minutes left, playing without Coach Norm Stewart, who's in a Columbia hospital with bleeding ulcers. 
Eighth-ranked Iowa, Big Ten play at Wisconsin, trailing in the first half against the Badgers. And today's big upset to this point, 10th-ranked Michigan fell at Minnesota. And this note, in women's play, Brooklyn College lost for the 55th time in a row. That's an all-time NCAA record for men or women, breaking the previous mark from Kalamazoo's women's team of 1982. Well, Thursday night was the last time the current NBA players were on the court because it is All-Star Weekend in Houston. But some other players took the court earlier today at the Old Timers game in three-point shootout as Pat O'Brien reports. The Astrodome in Houston, Texas, where tomorrow they will play the 39th annual NBA All-Star game. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien here inside the Dome. And boy, is this place lonely when it's empty. But come tomorrow afternoon, 45,000 basketball fans get the thrill of watching the game's greatest down on that floor. That floor is that postage stamp you see down there in left field line. They are doing final preparations now, and everything will be ready for tomorrow's spectacular as the 24 greatest basketball players get together. Now, earlier today at the Summit here in Houston, the East and West worked out, and James Brown was there. Over here at the Summit, loose and carefree are the operative words that best describe how the East All-Stars feel as they go through their final practice drills in preparation for tomorrow's showcase event. Now, for a number of players like Charles Barkley and Moses Malone, it was a reunion of sorts and an opportunity for Charles to tease Moses about his receding hairline. On the injury front, Michael Jordan has been nursing a very sore left knee but says it's not serious enough to keep him out of action. Meanwhile, on the West All-Star squad, most of the conversation focused on the fact that the living legend himself, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, will be playing, after all, in his final All-Star game. Now, that fact alone seems to have been a bit of incentive for the likes of Carl Malone, Clyde Drexler, and Akeem Olajuwon, who are intent on sending Kareem out on a positive note. Seems like the ingredients for an outstanding All-Star game tomorrow afternoon. It's just fun, you know, fun, loose game. And uh, I think uh, those instincts of... Uh, uh, schoolyard ball come out again. The atmosphere, the energy is incredible. Uh, everyone's all excited. The fans really love it. And uh, we just really enjoy the three days off so we can come and partake in, in an event like this. These guys want to win a ball game. Uh, I want to win too. Forget telling my kids down the road one day, well, we lost to them. They want to say, Dad, did you win when they see these uniforms? The mailman. Now this afternoon over at the summit, they held All-Star Saturday, which is becoming a fan favorite. And here's one of the reasons why. They began with the Legends game, and the headline tomorrow is going to be Calvin Murphy. 26 points, a Legends game record, including four three-pointers, including one to win the game at the buzzer for the West. Needless to say, Calvin Murphy in front of the hometown crowd was the Legends MVP. It's unbelievable. At home, in front of my home crowd, uh, at the buzzer, a three-pointer, and I was the one to make it, I feel, I'm elated with the fact that I had a chance to be the hero. Then it was the three-point shootout, and it came down to two riflemen, Craig Hodges and Dale Ellis. But Hodges lost his shot down in the stretch, and Dale Ellis of the Seattle Supersonics got red hot. With the clock ticking down, Ellis became the first person whose name is not Larry to win it. And in the slam dunk contest, it came down to Kenny Walker and Clyde Drexler. This is the best dunk of the day, folks. Kenny Walker, a late sub for Air Jordan and uh, Air Walker. <laughs> and it's come down to Walker and Drexler. We'll have the details of all the activities tomorrow. Let's send you back now to New York and Jim Nance. Jim. Well, Pat, thank you. We'll look forward to joining you and James Brown tomorrow, 2.45 Eastern Time, as you begin our special coverage of the NBA All-Star Game right here on CBS. We'll continue on the road to the Final Four after this word. Saying goodbye to a car you've owned for years is a lot like saying goodbye to an old friend. But if it's a Mercedes-Benz, there's always this cheering fact to consider. Over the years, Mercedes-Benz automobiles as a line have retained a higher percentage of their original value than any other make of car sold in America. And that can make the sorrow of parting a little sweeter. How do you figure your financial future? How do you get an advantage? Look for an edge. 
Look for a company that can sharpen your opportunities in mutual funds, pensions, IRAs, employee benefit plans, insurance, and much more. Look for the Principal Edge from the Principal Financial Group, one of America's largest, helping people with the fine points of their financial future, the Principal. Look for the Edge. Hi, may I take your order, please? Big Mac McDLT, a quarter pounder with some cheese filet, a fish, a hamburger, a cheeseburger, a Happy Meal, McNuggets, tasty golden french fries, regular and larger sizes, salad, chef, a garden, or a chicken salad, oriental, big, big breakfast, egg McMuffin, hot cakes and sausages, maybe biscuits, bacon, egg and cheese and sausage, Danish hash brown, two and four, dessert, hot apple pies and sundae, three varieties of soft serve, cone, two kinds of shakes and chocolate, each of cookies, and to drink a Coca-Cola diet, coke and orange, drink it's right and coffee, decaf, two, a loaf, and milk, also an orange juice, I love McDonald's, first time, great taste, and I get this all at one place. Would you like that to go? Express Mail from your post office offers you 46,000 drop-off points. We deliver, we deliver. A guaranteed morning delivery. We deliver, we deliver. And an overnight price of just $8.75. We deliver, we deliver. Speed, convenience, price. It's a package only we can deliver. Express Mail from your postal service. We deliver for you. On All-Star Sunday, gravity will be shattered. When the team of your dreams proves man was meant to fly. Featuring the central force of Moses and Aki. The forward power of Dominique and the mailman. Plus, the full court finesse of Isaiah. And a man named Michael. It's showtime at the Astrodome. The NBA All-Star Game. The greatest show above Earth. Welcome back to the road to the final four. Earlier today, we checked down at the Daytona International Speedway to see how the qualifying was going on for the pole position. Well, Ken Squire has the final results. Ken? Here at the Daytona International Speedway, pole position qualifying is over for the 30th annual Daytona 500. What a day it's been. Just a few days ago in Charlotte, North Carolina, at an NBA Celtics Hornets game, this man told me he would take the front row. And Rick Hendrick, what a predictor. You've done it. We were very fortunate. We wanted to run good. This is the Super Bowl of motorsports, and we're just happy to be on the front row with our two guys. And the man on the pole for the second straight year from Missouri, Ken Schrader. Well, it feels awful good. You know, last year we started in pole. This thing wound up sixth. Uh, but I've learned a lot this year, and uh, I'm, I'm ready to race with Darrell all day now. And the man on the outside of the front row, he, too, seeking his first win of the Daytona 500, is Tennessee's Darrell Waltrip. This is my 17th Daytona 500. I'm driving car 17. My daughter will be 17 months old on the 17th down here. Roll, tide, roll. Doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> Doesn't mean a thing. So let's look right now one more time at the front row and the speeds established here today in qualifying for next Sunday's Daytona 500. From the Daytona International Speedway, I'm Ken Squire. All right, Ken, one other note. Bill Elliott qualified third on the pole, but he went back to the hospital where he's receiving treatment for a broken wrist from a crash yesterday. Tomorrow at noon, Daytona will be the site of the Bush Clash. 13 cars in a 50-mile sprint. We'll see it right here. Coming up next, we rejoin Vern Lundquist and Tommy Hankson back in Pittsburgh, where Georgetown leads by eight. We'll get there after this message and a word from your local station. Moms are like, Whoa. bring home a new guy, they put their foot down. Come home a little late, they put their foot down. My mom's no different. I get this great new Oldsmobile Cutlass Calais with a quad four engine. And what does she do? You got it. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. I put my foot down. Uh oh. This is new generation of Great meeting. Super presentation. The new report would have been nice, but I don't think they missed no, it. Oh, no, 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 me neither. With all the problems you face at work, your office equipment shouldn't be one of them. Love your time. Rico, we don't let your office get in the way of your business. Come cruising with Quaker State and you could win this 57 vet. Buy a case of Quaker State and send for a free cruising cassette. Rock, sold country, or California sounds. And maybe win this vintage vet. The road goes on forever when you're cruising with Quaker State quality. We've had hail before, but this was the biggest we've ever seen. It was a very frightening experience. It sounded like somebody was out here with a baseball bat, pounding the roof. The hail was just terrible. 
and I was really scared. I really was. Allstate checked out our car, gave us an estimate, wrote us out a check right there. They were so fast on the job and so efficient. With Allstate, you do not have to worry. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. This is CBS. It's wild. The finance guys, the banks, the brokers, they're in love with Ninex. I know it. Ninex for computers, Ninex for telephones. Max, do you know how many telephone systems there are besides Ninex? A zillion. Do you know how many computer companies there are besides Ninex? Two zillion. But everybody's using Ninex. Max, what's Ninex? The only game in town. Plus a year's supply of Exxon gasoline at no extra charge. That's a deal even my dad couldn't pass up. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. I'll trade you the Cutlass Supreme, the cash, and all that gasoline for what's behind door number one. No deal, Dad. This is the new generation of old. From your good old, good old guy. Take the Alzheimer's test Wednesday at 5 and 11. CBS Sports coverage of college basketball is sponsored by Budweiser Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Allstate for home, auto, and life insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. And by the heartbeat of America, today, Chevrolet. We are in the Civic Arena in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh, PA. 16,600 plus on hand. And Georgetown Hoyas, ranked number two in the country, used a 13-0 run in the late stages of the first half to go out on top 44 to 36. Field goal in the first half. Georgetown 61%. Pittsburgh started hot, hit 11 of its first 17, but hit only two of its last 12. Georgetown with 12 substitutions off of John Thompson's bench. And Paul Evans put four subs in the game for the uh, Pittsburgh Panthers. Leading scores in the first half. Smith with 11 points for Georgetown and Jason Matthews for 14. But Tommy, Brian Shorter went to the bench with 5.34 remaining in the first half with his third foul. And when that happened, Jason Matthews became a marked man. Well, there was no question about it because he was really having a hot hand from the outside against the zone. And the next thing you know, they put Brian on him. And wherever he went, Brian was sure to be. And at, point, at some point, they took him out of their team defense, and even when Matthews got rid of the ball, he never left him. And that's really way, the way to take a good scorer out of a ball game. Once he gets rid of the ball, don't let him get it back. On the way in the second half, Jackson Smith and Bryant join Morning and John Turner in the lineup for Georgetown. Jaron Jackson rebound. Bobby Martin kicks it out to Sean Miller, and Pittsburgh finds Shorter up and will shoot a couple. And there are bodies on the floor as uh, multiple collisions took place. Darrell Porter, the last man up. That's the third foul on John Turner. Let's see if John Thompson goes to his bench immediately. John Thompson is not really concerned with fouls, but I think the two players. That would be Charles Smith and Alonzo Mourning. Well, we're going to get the uh, Twin Towers now for Georgetown. Here's Elijah Juan Sampson, 1989 version. As Matembo is in. <laughs> And, oh no, he took morning out. That's John right. Turner stays in. You're That's right. right. Wants to talk to him about something, uh, or didn't like something. I, I, I don't know what's not to like about Alonzo, Alonzo Morning, however. Brian Schroeder in his first year after sitting out last season. And a 19.8 average. That is the highest points per game average ever posted by a first year player in the 10 year history of the Big East. 37.44. So morning is getting ready after a quick rest to come back in. A whistle. Anthony Allen and Alonzo Morning both will end of the game. You know what this Georgetown team reminds me of, Vern? Is John Thompson's got a philosophy of running the marathon. Considers a basketball game the marathon. Everybody else is going to run it individually to try and set the world record for the marathon. He uses a relay team. How can you lose? <laughs> that last foul on Sean Miller, his third. <laughs> I mean, that's what all these substitutions are all about. 
Can you imagine running a running a, a mile relay with ten guys? That's it, boy. And as soon as you have, take two breaths deep, another guy takes your place. So John Turner is down, and Anthony Allen is on to uh, take his place. Interesting as the uh, free throw goes in, it's 46-37. Thompson told us last night that one of the reasons he has an easy schedule in December is so he can get his young men into the lineup. But now as crunch time begins and they prepare for the tournament, the veteran players will play that much more. There's the rejection again, and a technical foul on Paul Evans. Jim Burr teed him up. Long drive. Well, that was a quick one. I mean, Burr was two feet away, and whatever Evans said went right in one ear and stayed there. <laughs> I'll tell you, Paul Evans, when I look at this fifth team, this team to me is, is like two players short. They are exceptionally smart, uh, but you can't play a game with five or six people, particularly a team like Georgetown or Syracuse, but these kids are going to be great next year. They get two players that can fill in with this group that he has now. They're going to be one of the big beasts of the Big East. Well, among the early signings, they have some height coming in, and that's one of the problems, too. Lack of experience as well as lack of depth. There's Alonzo Mourning <laughs> for two more. Oh, and he can do stuff like that, too, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. 49-37. Largest lead of the game now. It's 12. I mean, he just read the defense. Saw nobody coming to him and just wheeled to the hoop. That's a power move. Miller looks inside. Shorter battling for position with Anthony Allen. And Brian Shorter goes back to the line. I know, we, you saw him a week ago against Syracuse, and uh, you were most impressed with the, with this young man's moves down below the low post area. Well, he's got the maturity and the understanding of how to play the low post using his body and not really overcommitting himself, just nudging people a half inch. And then when he brings the ball up, he brings it up in sections, and if the defender hasn't committed, he continues up with the shot. Now, that is total poise and, and total understanding of what should be done down there. Most people can't play with their back to the basket. John Turner comes back in. You think the recruiting process doesn't start early? Brian Shorter told Tom and me yesterday, he first heard from Pittsburgh when he was in the ninth grade in Philadelphia. That was his first contact with Pittsburgh University. Well, it's no wonder if he was playing a low post in the ninth grade <laughs> like, he, like he is now. That's right. Morning shot, rims and goes out. Miller looks down court, fires it left side. Shorter will shoot a couple more. I tell you, he told us yesterday he was going to show Alonzo the ball and make him leak. Make him commit to the ball. And that was a full extension of fake. Now, you watch what he does. You really have to anticipate that he's going to shoot the ball when he gives that kind of a fake. Shorter shoots two. Gets the first. He's now six, six and a half. Not tall, certainly, for a low post man. And asked him yesterday if he was still growing, and he said, no, darn it, or something like that. <laughs> And said he wanted to be 6'9", but he didn't think he was going to get there. He loves to play the low post. You don't want to go out there and play on the outside. That's tough duty. You've got to do too many things. 49-40. Last three points scored by Pittsburgh. Underneath, Alonzo Morning guarded by Bobby Martin. Offensive foul. Now, that was not the Stanislavski method. That was just superior defense by Martin. Showed him to the middle and makes Morning think that he's going to go the other way. But now watch what he does. Quick feet back the other way. That is outstanding defense that time by Martin. That's the third foul on Alonzo Morning. So he became, becomes the second Georgetown player with three. Darrell Porter is... Morning comes out, Matthews puts it up and cans it. Now, when you're playing that zone defense, he can find the scene. A little up fake once again as the man made the hard rush at him, allowed him to get open. Matthews is just having the troubles with the half court man to man defense that Pitt is put, uh, that Georgetown's putting on. Him. Morning is out, the Kemi Motembo is in. 17 substitutions for John Thompson now. 49 42. Last five points scored by the Pittsburgh Panthers. Uh, we'll see how much Pitt has left coming down Heartbreak Hill. Air ball. Now that's the point. Fatigue at the end of the game. Miller, nice entry pass. Shorter misses. 
Kicked out to Smith, and here comes Georgetown on the run. Five against three. Dwayne Bryant, strong move. And it's knocked out of bounds by Sean Miller. Smith. Offensive foul. Bobby Martin takes another charge. He has to stay. He likes show business, right? He's hitting the deck all over the place. Yeah, that's the Leslie Nielsen school of defense. I think so. 49-42. 17-15 to go. Nice move, Darrell Porter. Off the glass and good. And a 7-0 Pittsburgh run. What confidence he has. He was staring Alonzo Mourning right in the eye and said, so what? Excuse me, Matumbo. Matumbo out of the high post. John Turner kicks it out to Dwayne Bryant. Good defense by Matthews. Spin move, Dwayne Bryant. Rebound, Pittsburgh. For Brian Shorter over Charles Smith, blocked by Matumbo. John Turner at it. Smith calmly backs it out. The Kemi Matumbo at 7 1, 2, or 3. Take your pick down the low post. <laughs> And John Thompson says, spread it out. 20 on the shot clock. Jaron Jackson. Pump fake up. Good. Nice shot. That was a real great shot because the shooter just hung, uh, the defender just hung on his shooting hand. And that high arcing shot for nothing but the bottom of the net. That puts the plug in a 7 0 Pittsburgh run. They've got Shorter Miller. This is Bobby Martin. Matimbo with the block. Turner kicks it out to Charles Smith. And finds the basket. There he is. Water. <laughs> Can't dam him up. He'll find some way to get to the ocean. Perhaps in fatigue, perhaps in frustration. Whatever the cause, Paul Evans calls time. Once, there were a few proud men, men of adventure, men of courage, men who knew the meaning of honor. There still are the Marines. We're looking for a few good men. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Listen to the heartbeat. Legendary Chevy Camaro. You've always hoped someday you could afford one. Welcome to Someday. The heartbeat of America. David Friedland, politician, adventurer, con man. Now he's behind bars, but where's the loot? His story tonight. You're going to see right now what happens with the relay team on defense. You've got one, two, three, four players hustling back off a real hard push. And look who's back in there. The two biggest guys on the court for Georgetown, Turner and Matumbo. I want to tell you, big guys usually at this stage of the game can hardly walk up the court. Nine-point edge for Georgetown going after their 19th win of the year. Underneath, Brian Shorter works hard, and Martin follows with it. 
There's an example of Bobby Martin going to the glass. He was there for the rebound. As soon as the shot blocker went over, Martin got great position on the weak side, and I think that was really a pass off the backboard like we talked about. Don't worry about the shooter. Just get it over as a defender. Just get it over his hand to the opposite side of the glass. Here's Alonzo Morning with the jump hook short. Tipped out, taken away by Mark Tillman. Tillman, Jackson for three. Nails it. Hey, he has really developed the shooting touch. Jaron Jackson, he can do so many things for John Thompson's club. Playing the small forward now, he can even play the point. This is the first year he's averaging double figures, but he's really come on this year. Miller guarded by Charles Smith. They're working on that stamina, and Smith will stay right with him. Now Jackson on Darrell Porter underneath the Bobby Martin. Nice play. Bobby Alonzo Morning really had his back turn, was looking for the shot coming another way. Thrown away. That's seven Georgetown turnovers. And anything but a smile for John Thompson. John has had a, a long year and a half getting ready for the Olympic team. And of course, he did take the month of October off and then get, get this ball club back. Here's a nice pass underneath. And a foul. On Alonzo Morning, his fourth. Here's the pass off the backboard. We'll see Bobby Martin come in from the weak side. As Morning is right there on the left of your screen is Martin creating room for himself right off the glass. Nobody there. Picked it down clean and back up and in. Tom, I think you're right. I think that was an intentional pass. Absolutely. Get it up on the glass and make the ball come off on the other side. And the, what happens is that the shot blocker jumps even higher and it takes longer for him to come down and react. That play rejected by Jonathan Edwards. Dish left side, John Turner. And he'll shoot a couple. I don't tell you. That is a power forward in John Turner to get up the court like that. Foul is on number 22. Jason John Turner goes to the line. Georgetown and Pittsburgh today, and how about the lineup tomorrow on All-Star Sunday? The Arizona Wildcats take on the Oklahoma Sooners 12.45 Eastern Time on CBS. That'll be followed by the NBA All-Star Game with coverage beginning the pregame show at 2.45 and the tip at 3.15 from the Astrodome in Houston. All-Star Sunday tomorrow. John Turner at the line to shoot a couple. Speaking about the pros, you know, we used to play against Will Chamberlain, and that pass off the backboard was how we used to stop Will Chamberlain, who was a great shot blocker. I think you told me you won a key game one time when That's he came right. over to guard and, you. And Nate Thurman was on the same team with him, and I was surrounded by these two guys who were much, much bigger than me. And I knew Russell, as soon as Chamberlain switched over to try and block my shot, that Russell would be heading to the board, and right off the top of the glass, and Russell just slammed it in and when I told everybody it was a pass that I gave Russell they looked at me like I was crazy because Tommy Heinz had never passed <laughs> I was going to come to that conclusion somehow but I'm glad you did bounce pass Jason Matthews up and in nice play for the sophomore from Los Angeles more slashing moves by that young man and he'll be a great player just a little bit more aggressive find a little bit more offense for himself Matthews don't let himself be denied the ball. 18 points now. The lead is back to 8. 58, 50, 13, 17 to go. On the floor, Mark Tillman, Jonathan Edwards in the lineup. Now with John Turner, there's Tillman. That wasn't quite like water. I'd say it was like lava, that move by Tillman. But he kept going to the ocean, too. Nobody stepped out and stopped him. Lava? Yes, lava. A little slower than... A little slower. <laughs> 60 to 50, 12, 55 to go with the ball game. Alley oop, Bobby Martin. Pump fake, Jonathan Edwards with a foul, and Martin will shoot a couple. Oh boy, they're using all the moves on shot blockers. Foul is on number 42, Jonathan Edwards, his second. First Edwards, first. second foul, and Bobby Martin goes to the free throw line. Foul number seven. Martin has played foul well foul today. He had a horrid game against down. Providence when he, in the first half, Picked up three fouls, five turnovers, one rebound, and Paul Evans was most upset. There's the substitution number now, 22 to four. Martin gets the first. Big East, of course, one of the stronger conferences in the country. 
84.6% winning percentage this year. Martin wow. gets the ball. For years, I think the Big, Big East had an advantage because they played that scrambling defense that really nobody else had ever seen. But when they would go out of the conference, it was like these people came from Mars with playing. We just didn't know how to, to really play against this very aggressive defense. And of course, Georgetown is the, the premier team that uses that type of defense. Last basket by Jaron Jackson. And it's a 62-52 ball game. Eight-point lead at the half. Pittsburgh got within five on a 7 nothing run earlier. And Martin traveled. And Matumbo just stood there and didn't move until the ball was released. Funny, John told you that uh, Matumbo doesn't go for fakes. Oh, it was very easy to teach him. He didn't have a lot of bad habits to break. You know, he didn't play a lot of basketball. And John said to him the first time, is don't jump until the ball is released from the guy's hand. And he does. Here's Matumbo from Zaire. Scoop shot by Charles Smith. No good. Sean Miller. Penetrates. Dishes left side to Jason Matthews. Back out to Porter. Tipped away. Porter saves it and has it stolen by Charles Smith. Quickly up to Sean Miller. Brian Shorter. Foul on Matumbo. Yep. And Matumbo was just sitting there waiting, looking down at Shorter and saying, when are you going to release it? Inevitably, I think, Tom, that the comparisons are drawn between Matumbo and Elijah Wan. Yep, and as Matumbo, he's got exceedingly long arms. So as tall as he is, he's even larger as a shot blocker because of those long arms. Rod Brooken enters the game for Pittsburgh. But he puts the hand up there, you know, unlike Alonzo you have at least an idea of what you got to shoot over because Matumbo has his hands straight up in the air and maybe you can lean by it. But one of the secrets of shot blocking is never let the guy close down close to you. Always make him release the ball in front of you so you have time to react and block it. Bobby Winston in for Jaron Jackson. Of course, Matumbo from Zaire, his native language is French. He also speaks a couple of other languages and took last year off to learn English. Official timeout. Time has been called, 62-53, 11.43 to go. For the pride, for the dream, for the love, and for the team, for the sweat and for the drive, for the reason, reason you strive. For all you do, crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. This Bud's for you, Bud. This Bud's for you. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Listen to the heartbeat, heartbeat of America. Oh, yeah. The Chevrolet Corsica now has an affordable new hatchback, so you can get more into it and more out of it. Okay. <laughs> Who on earth can resist the abundance of a Pizza Hut pan pizza? All those toppings, that deep chewy crust, two layers of cheese. Who can resist a Pizza Hut pan pizza? So far, nobody. What our pizza? Hmm? Pizza Hut, making it great. This game summary is sponsored by Pizza Hut, making it great. Thus far in the ballgame, Georgetown 5 of 10 from three-point range, Pitt 4 of 6. Alonzo Mourning is on the bench with four fouls. He has 12 points and two blocks. Jason Matthews leads Pittsburgh with 18 points. Real key to the ballgame, though, goes back to the first half when Brian Shorter picked up his third foul with 5-14 to go in the half. And as he sat down, Georgetown went on a 13-0 run to come from behind by three and take a, an eight-point halftime lead. Alonzo Morning on the bench, and Dikembe Mutombo is in his spot at center. There's Charles Smith looking in for Mutombo. Kicks it back out to Mark Tillman, and taken away by Brian Shorter. Here's Rod Brooking at the other end. Has to save it and throw it away. And 
and Shorter fell into the uh, Georgetown bench right in the lap of John Thompson, as a matter of fact. I'm surprised they gave him back. <laughs> Might have wanted to keep him. <laughs> well, the referee's in the way as they try to get the ball and up in the bench. Jim Burr, who impeded the progress. Bobby Winston. Pump fake up in. Yeah, I think Bobby Winston is going to be a key player come tournament time for Georgetown. Why so? Because he's got great experience and he's played in those situations and really under a lot of pressure. And he's got some skill. Not as good an outside shooter as some of the other people, but boy, does he sure know how to run this defense. Alley oop, back door, Martin. Shorter with the jump hook. Shorter with the rebound. No basket. No basket. Foul is on number 52, John Foul is on John Turner. That's his fourth. You got to finish the story about Matumbo. Come on. Okay. Matumbo, of course, uh, learned English last, last year, but John Thompson said his biggest problem was with the jargon of the sport, the idiom. He doesn't understand the slang of basketball. For example, Tommy, he said, when you mentioned backdoor to him, yeah, when, you, when you mentioned backdoor to him, he thinks it's a backdoor in your house. <laughs> Doesn't, doesn't translate quite as easily. No, no, doesn't know the slang. So John also said, though, Matumbo is going to be a journalist's dream when he becomes a player. He's not shy at all and uh, has a great sense of humor and a, and a very large personality. Uh, one of the problems to happen with him, because he really doesn't understand, they, they want him to take care of the ball a little bit better when it goes on the inside. He says, otherwise the guards won't keep passing him the ball because he puts a lot of pressure on the guards to make sure they have they use good options. So Matumbo is kind of caught in between there. Ryan Shorter goes into double figures. The substitutions now 26 to 5. As that depth of Georgetown most evident in this ballgame. Smith to Matumbo. You know this whole style is really what John Thompson learned from Red Auerbach in the Russell Casey Jones, Sam Jones era. That was the all-defensive team the Celtics had. Here's Brooken. Batted away. Foul on Jaron Jackson. And Rod Brooken will shoot a couple. Yeah, John Thompson, of course, after graduating from Providence College in 64, played with the Boston Celtics for a couple of years. A teammate of yours. He sure did. And he's a pretty good player. Sam Jones, the guy that I think right now would equate something like Charles Smith and Casey Jones, who just went into the Hall of Fame. Uh, they would get out and harass people and really gamble good hands and if they missed so what there was Russell sitting back there ready to block the shot and I think John Thompson saw that and also read our philosophy of playing a lot of people how well it helped the morale of his ball club and how fresh everybody could be in playing an aggressive style of uh, basketball quickly up to Charles Smith Smith gets a pick from Anthony Allen, who's back in the lineup now. Harassed by Darrell Porter. 64-56, under 10 minutes to go in the ballgame. Nice dish to Matumbo. Wow, that's a shot he's learned. What a pass by Jackson, though. He really had to search out about a half inch to slide it through. And the pressure applied by Georgetown. Brian Shorter, that'll be a technical foul on Shorter. I think in this case, it's obvious he was trying to keep himself from injury. And Jim Burr immediately slapped the tee on him. Well, as Matumbo, you're going to try and power the ball down. And he's looking at him all the way. There's Matumbo. I think they got a legitimate case as he was out of control. And the only thing that saved him from possibly a serious injury was grabbing onto the rim. You know, like a lot of rules, some some things become automatic. And this was not definitely an automatic. Now look at that rim bend down there, but Matumbo was underneath him and he was out of control. Brian Shorter came over to argue with Jim Burr while Charles Smith was missing a free throw and Burr just shrugged his shoulders. Back to a 10 point edge at 66-56. Air ball, Matthews comes down with it. Kicks it right side to Sean Miller. And he comes up, and you know who's in his face, Charles Smith. 
Brooking. Yes, for three. Big, big basket for Brooking. Now, Georgetown with Alonzo being on the bench right now does not have the same kind of inside offense. Matumbo is not an inside scorer. Matumbo shields the ball and gets it back to Mark Tillman. John Thompson up, prowling the sideline. Lead is seven. 8.40 to go in the ballgame. Pittsburgh losers of their last two. They have never lost three in a row under Paul Evans. Tillman almost taken away. Traveling. They diverted Lava. He was heading straight to the hoop. John Turner back into the lineup for the Georgetown Hoyas. And Alonzo Morning is going to come back in with the four fouls. Well, John Thompson's saying right now with the substitution that we need Alonzo in there for offensive purposes to try and stop the enthusiastic crowd here from going wild. Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. It's been a good ball game right now. A seven-point edge, 66-59. Georgetown used a 13-0 run in the late stages of the first half to come from behind and take an eight-point halftime lead. And the teams have played more or less on even terms in this half. Morning just fouled out. And that is a bemused look on the freshman's face. What a play by Matthews to lift Morning. They must have worked on those fakes. But a big gamble by John Thompson does not pay off as the Wiley sophomore Matthews going hard to the hoop makes morning switch up fakes lifts them and then lean just enough into him that contact was created. John Thompson just put him back into the lineup and he quickly draws his fifth foul 12 points two blocks which is three below his per game average and the young man sticks his fist in the air as he goes out. He wants to win. I'll tell you, they talk about him in such unusual terms, including Paul Evans, who said, I have never seen a kid come into college basketball that wants to play defense as much as this kid does. Most of the kids just want to play offense. This kid wants to demolish you with defense. Well, I think the ultimate compliment comes when you compare him to Bill Russell. And no one I know who's doing college basketball could make that comparison and make it more valid than you can. Eight minutes to go. It's 66-60. The lead is six. Jace, Sean Miller with the rebound. Rod Brookin. Boy, this will bring the crowd up. Basketball. Georgetown doesn't operate too well without Morning. Pitt didn't operate too well without Shorter in the first half. You got to keep your big guns in the ball game. I thought John Thompson made a good move, but Morning is a freshman. He should have just run away from that. And let him score. And now Georgetown will try and draw Pitt out. Now uh, sometimes I take exception to this type of play because. Georgetown is very, very aggressive, and now all of a sudden they become totally passive. Jackson misses, Martin with a rebound. And a chance to get within one or possibly tie it up. Miller with the entry pass, Shorter can't control it, and it comes out to Jaron Jackson of Georgetown. Nice pass, Charles Smith, jumper. Martin hustling for the rebound and is fouled. It's Matthews who gets Fouled by Jonathan Edwards. One of the great advantages of a fast break team is if you can get big people up the court and are not tired and you have a miss, you can crash the boards. That time Jonathan Edwards was out on the wing, an awful big wingman got in on the action but just didn't have the foot movement to stay out of foul trouble. Jason Matthews goes to the line as Edwards goes to the bench. Matthews Jason hitting 90%. Matthews for the year, he's already got 19 points. A young man out of Los Angeles. They want him to get a little bit more aggressive. Don't let anybody get in his way. Force what he wants to happen. In January, Pittsburgh knocked off Syracuse, then number two, 
Oklahoma, then number three, and Seton Hall, then number nine. And now, with Alonzo Mourning on the bench, they pull within one. Our coverage continues after this message from your local station. Arizona, Oklahoma, the new number one ranked Wildcats battle last week's top ranked Sooners tomorrow on an All-Star Sunday on CBS Sports. This is CBS. This year, the world's automakers will once again offer hordes of imitation BMWs. Meanwhile, for under $25,000, BMW offers something infinitely more valuable. The new BMW 325i. Why settle for a copy when you can own an original? For a test drive, contact your New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut BMW dealers. Did you know that there are 1,300 churches and synagogues in Brooklyn? 1,500 different congregations, more places to worship than Rome or Tel Aviv. And did you know that New York Newsday has more reporters and editors assigned to Brooklyn than the News, the Post, and the Times put together? I did. I'm one of them. More reporters means closer coverage of your borough. New York Newsday, the best on New York, six days a week. Now even better on Sunday. CBS Sports coverage of college basketball is sponsored by Reebok. Reebok's let you be you. The Upjohn Company. If you're concerned about hair loss, see your doctor. And by your friends at Anheuser-Busch, who remind you to know when to say when. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 646 to go in the ballgame. And Pittsburgh has fought back, having trailed by as many as 12 in this half. They've really got this crowd into this ballgame as well, Tom. Well, I think their outside game, particularly Matthews, who has now become more aggressive, something they wanted them to do for a long time now. He has put the ball on the floor. He's got great quickness and really has surprised Georgetown. And that last foul that he created on Alonzo may be the turning point in this ballgame for Pitt. Alonzo Morning went out with 8.13 to go, and Georgetown up by six. It's now 66-65. Tillman, Anthony Allen, John Turner, Charles Smith, and Jaron Jackson in the lineup for Georgetown. No! Brooking with a rebound, and Pittsburgh with a chance to take the lead. Uh, Georgetown has to find a guy that can put the ball on the inside a little bit and put it in the hoop. That would have been morning had he been in there. They might decide to go to Turner. Right now, I think this man with the ball, Matthews, is the key. Pittsburgh leads for the first time since a 28-25 lead midway through the first half. And Bryant is coming back to try and cool off Matthews. Matthews with 24. That was his fifth three-pointer. And a foul momentarily quiets the crowd. Foul is on number 21, Rod Griffin. Dwayne Bryant back into the lineup now. And Mark Kilman. We'll head to the Georgetown bench. Well, Pitt has to be very happy with their offense from the outside, although Shorter and Martin, without warning being in there, have not really been utilized. And Matumbo isn't in there either. Charles Smith, the foul on Sean Miller, that's his fourth. And again, as we head into the stretch, keep two things in mind, the lack of depth and the fatigue factor. Well, you got that right, but it seems to be when you get a league that uh, all of a sudden you get another shot of adrenaline. Look at this guy right now. He's still going on full octane. John Miller, freshman of the year in the Big East last year, his fourth personal foul, but he will stay in the game. And Charles Smith will go to the line. Miller, whose dad, John, was his high school coach at Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Yeah, we said last week he's got to make the old baby face team. <laughs> That's right. Boy, with, with him and Jay Burson, you got a couple of quick starters. <laughs> Smith. And that ends a 12-0 run. Uh, this man, Charles Smith, is going to be uh, their go-to guy. He's going to try and create. He'll do it probably off the dribble. 
And Sean Miller does not really have the great quickness to match Charles Smith. Tied at 68, 526 to go. Miller looks for Shorter. Shorter over Turner. Rebound Bobby Martin taken away by Dwayne Bryant. And it's a three on two. Jackson pulls up and hits Smith as the jumper. And then goes back and retrieves the ball and puts it up again. Matthews for Pittsburgh. Off balance shot. And Rod Brooken diving for the ball. Looked to me, I got, the referee got my way at the table, but it looked to me like he could have gotten fouled. He tries to make a spin move right here as they cut off the attack angle. And they reached from the ball, but the official underneath the basket could not see that as Matthew's body just cut off the vision. Mark Tillman back into the lineup, and Jaron Jackson goes to the bench. Sean Miller will rest now with four fouls. Brooklyn ends up at the line. Darrell Porter comes in to play the point. Brooklyn fouls. He was diving for that loose ball. Rod Brooken with 10 points, three rebounds. Sat out the second semester last year as academically ineligible and really gained that weight. Got into the Paul Evans doghouse, but uh, ignited all of Pittsburgh when he led the way to the upset over Oklahoma back in January. But other than that, has had some problems this year. The substitution total now, 34 to 7. But once again, Pitt is still on their toes. Foul on Brooklyn. That's his third. Zumbo is back in there for defensive purposes, quite obviously, the shot block. And offensively, Turner probably was a good option to go to. And I think this more or less signifies that they're going to get it to Smith and let him try and do what he does best. Find the ocean. That was the fifth team foul on Pittsburgh. Here's Smith with Brooklyn guarding him. <laughs> that little play to hand. Oh, what a nifty play, and Tillman hits the basket. Well, everybody was trying to cut him off, and uh, somebody just, teammate, went in right behind him. Easy shot. 4.20 to go, tied at 70. Porter now playing the point. Gets the pick from Bobby Martin. Oh, what a good defensive play by Matumbo to stop that penetration. Porter by Smith, oh. stripped by Smith. And Matthews gets it back, puts it up for three. No. Matumbo with the rebound. 70-70, four minutes to go in the game. Georgetown will be in the NCAA tournament. Pittsburgh in trouble. They're 11-10, and, and a win today, plus a, a strong showing in the Big East tournament, might get them in, but it's almost a have to. Well, Tillman is in there because he's a real good outside shooter. I think right now John Thompson is saying, more or less, we're going to gamble with Tillman, who's a much fresher player, to hit the outside shot. Bryant is going to be the playmaker, and they're going to try and run Smith off picks to try and get open. Shot clock at seven. Traveling. John Thompson can't believe it. Time has been called. The Great American Race, the Daytona 500. Oh, Harold, it's lovely. I hope you like it. <laughs> it reminds me of when he first got electric light back when I was a child. Oh. <laughs> Daddy used to draw his chair up to that light and read to us. Mm. Oh. And memories. But, Harold, this is the 80s. <laughs> and I wanted a Bud Light. If you want the one light Ooh. that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Kill the light, will you, Harold? Ooh, because everything else is just a light. We're back with another test of Chevy versus Ford. And this one you can do at home. Just load both trucks with eggs, then lower something heavy down on them. You'll see that Chevy has these notches that let you do double deck loading. You'll see that Ford doesn't have any notches. That's why we've had a change of heart about pickups. With Ford, you can bring home the bacon. With Chevy, you can bring home the bacon and the eggs. The heartbeat of America and the day Chevy truck. 
You know, some things in life are as inevitable as the tide. I always thought there really wasn't anything I could do about my hair loss, until I talked to my doctor. He diagnosed my problem. We talked about the treatment options. It's good to have the medical facts. And the fact is, there may be some hope for me. See your doctor if you're concerned about hair loss. Before we go back to Pittsburgh, the NBA slam dunk champ is Kenny Skywalker of the Knicks. He had his teammate Patrick Ewing watching as Walker was able to outduel and outdunk Clyde Drexler in the final round. Kenny Skywalker, the slam dunk champion. Let's go back to Pittsburgh and Vern Lundquist. Pittsburgh Panthers have overcome a 12-point deficit in this half. Sean Miller back in with four fouls. And pressure moderately applied by Georgetown. Now they drop back. 70-70. At one point, it was 49-37. Alonzo Morning fouled out for Georgetown at the 8-13 mark. And Georgetown leading by six at that point. Pitt is going to try and spread the Georgetown defense. Allen is defending against Shorter. He's going to try to run the clock down. Shorter underneath to Bobby Martin. Over Matumbo, drop. But Miller dives down, gets it. Hell ball, possession arrow, Pittsburgh. Matumbo, I'll tell you. They're playing pretty good basketball. And they make a good pick. They shake Martin loose, and there's Matumbo right there. Target for him to shoot over or lean around. Can't do it. I love what John said last night when asked if he wasn't taking a chance on him. He said, yep, but it's better to make a big mistake than a small mistake. Small mistakes get you fired. We call him a mail order player. You know, we found out about him through the mail. 30 seconds on the shot clock, 2.30 to go in the ball game. 70, 70. Pittsburgh playing with Brooklyn and Miller. Quarter, there's Bobby Martin. And he'll shoot a couple as Anthony Allen picks up the foul. One of the reasons they're going to Martin is they think that Martin, with his mobility, will be able to get around Matumbo. It hasn't worked so far. Here's the pick and roll, trying to shake Miller loose, and released by Martin, Matumbo right back in there, but Allen very alert to cut off the penetration. Bobby Martin with a good day at the free throw line. He's six of eight today. There's Darrell Porter. And substitutions as Bryant is in and Tillman is out now. And Bobby Martin, six of eight from the line today, and he's only a 62% free throw shooter. Well, John Thompson is looking for offense for Jaron Jackson right now, coming back into the ball game. Gave him a rest, hopes his legs are back underneath them and will have regained the touch. John Turner playing with four fouls, and Martin hits them both. 72-70 with 2 17 to go. Smith foul by Porter. Well, if you're going to play man-to-man -man defense against Georgetown when Smith has the ball, they, they just cleared out the whole entire side of the court for Smith to use his speed against Miller. It wasn't Miller. Who was it? Porter. Porter. And that uh, is a big speed advantage for Smith. Sean Miller comes back in with those four fouls. Got a breather as uh, Paul Evans tries to conserve him with the four fouls. And Charles Smith with a chance to tie, shooting two. Seven of nine from the line today. And he misses the first. The lead is one. The time is two minutes and eight seconds. Fatigue is no longer a factor in this ballgame. Now it's going to be who executes the best. And Pitt really has a great half-court offense now that morning is out of there. Let's find out which matchup they're going to try and utilize. They have not looked to short of being defended by Allen, except, well, almost. Brooking gives it back to Miller. And Bobby Martin is complaining to Jim Burr that Matembo is fouling him. There is a foul on Anthony Allen. And Brian Shorter will go to the line. Well, one of the reasons they're not going to Shorter is that Shorter will be defended by Allen and Matumbo will be coming over for the block. 
And so, in essence, he's, he would be, would be facing a double team with Martin working one on one against Matumbo. They're hoping that Martin's mobility advantage over Matumbo will really work to their benefit. Jared Jackson back in now, and Anthony Allen heads to the bench with his fourth personal foul. Ryan Shorter, 7 of 11 today. Make it 8 of 12. And if he hits this one, it'll equal the largest lead for Pittsburgh in the ballgame. And that came in the first half at 28-25. You know, tomorrow there'll be a lot of people should pit win, claiming that perhaps John Thompson made a mistake by putting Morning back in the game. But it was a gamble on John's part. He said, here's where we win the game or we possibly lose it. And the freshman just made, that was kind of a foul that could have gone either way, I guess, but that's what happens in college basketball. Smith blocked, battle for the ball. Hell ball, possession arrow, Georgetown. <laughs> One eighteen left, a two point. Pittsburgh lead. Georgetown with two timeouts left. Pittsburgh with three. Now you see here, Georgetown is their go-to guy is a guard so that uh, he's going to have to try and take it to the hoop or get fouled. Pittsburgh up the other end of the court their go-to guys are going to be two big people and that's where Alonzo Mourning would have been very important on the defense but also he would have been very important on the offense given the Georgetown Hoyers another option. Jackson gets the long rebound but is called for the foul shoving off to get position. That's his fourth. Foul is on Jared Jackson. And that wasn't the most flagrant foul I've ever seen. I, I wouldn't dare comment on it. <laughs> Anthony Allen coming back in. As John Thompson goes to the bench and the tumble comes out. Well, he's looking for offense now. He's going to put Allen out there. And as many times as he possibly can, he'll make substitutions offense for when they have the ball. And the tumble back in for defense up the other end. Shorter now 9 of 14. Morning is out. Turner, Jackson, and Allen with four. Miller playing with four. And Shorter hits them both. It's a four-point edge with 1.12 to go. Very important defensive possession for Pitt right now. They're going to get Darrell Porter, I believe, away from the ball, shoving Dwayne Bryant. And I want to tell you, that play that was just executed right there is in the old Celtic playbook. You watch the double high screen, a guard and high post and a pop out for the jumper. And that's the one that Kuzi and Shaman used to score with. See, there is nothing new in the world. Yep. Dwayne Bryant goes to the line. Dwayne Bryant gets the foul. 75-71. Pittsburgh ball, Bobby Martin with a rebound. 13 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. We've got 53 to go. I tell you, Pitt really deserves so much credit for keeping that poise under a very pressure packed defense in the first half without short of being in the ballgame. That was back at the 514 mark when Brian Shorter went to the bench with three fouls. And Georgetown went on a 13 nothing run. Timeout. Georgetown, they trail by four. Hey, we talk about playground legends. You gotta bring up a guy named Lamar Mundane. I seen him just rain jump shots on people. Four, five, six shots in a row. People just started calling me money. <laughs> Because when he shot, it was money in the bank. He'd come down and shoot a 15-footer, everybody on the side would be hollering, Mayo, 
slam dunks are tough. But when a 35-footer come raining out the sky, it'll wire you up. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. You've seen those Chevy versus Ford tests, right? We came up with one of our own. Half-ton 4x4s, best available tires, driven at the same identical speed right through this 18-inch deep ditch. Now, this is a real control test, so don't you try it, because you'll damage your truck. That's a Chevy with torsion bar suspension, and that's the Ford with twin traction beam suspension. And you can see why we've had a change of heart and pickups. That's today's Chevy truck. Winter's beautiful. She's just not real friendly sometimes. The days get shorter, the cold makes things kind of brittle, and the boys, well, they just get uglier. But come nightfall, when the fire gets hot, you still get thirsty. Bush. Winter's not so bad. Head for the mountains of Bush Beer. The team of your dreams. The NBA All-Star Game. The greatest show above Earth. An All-Star Sunday. 51 seconds remaining, 75-71, and Sean Miller at the line. All-Star Sunday tomorrow, the Bush Clash, followed by Arizona-Oklahoma. The NBA All-Star Game begins with a pregame show at 245, and then one of the highlights of the winter season, the NBA All-Star Game at 315 tomorrow. Now, the number seven free throw shooter in the country on the line. Boy, you got a heck of a choice here. Matthews hitting 90%, Miller 91%. The lead is six. And Miller goes to the bench with 11 assists, a career high, and his first two points of the ball game. Isn't that extraordinary? Chase down in the corner. Out of bounds. And it was out of bounds. It'll be Pittsburgh ball. John Miller comes back in, 40 seconds to go. Rod Brooken, who was a real spark in his second half with two three-pointers tonight on CBS, Dolphin Cove, the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, and West 57th Street. 40 seconds remaining. Timeout, Pittsburgh. Tell them that you love them. The love Garfield bouquet from Teleflora. Valentine's flowers and something worth keeping. Tell them, tell them, tell them right To send one anywhere, call your local florist. A videotape that guarantees original brilliance and sharpness even after 500 plays? This is the tape that does it. B-A-S-S. Because every time you play it, or play it again, or record over it, Play after play after play, the original brilliance and sharpness always comes through. So if you're looking for the videotape that just keeps coming back for more, ask for BASF. Because even after 500 plays, the original brilliance always comes through. With it, you can communicate instantly with anyone virtually anywhere in the world. With it, you can save time and money. Without it, you're just not dressed for business. The MCI card. It is America's business card. Life's full of simple pleasures, like the comfort of Levi's jeans. Had you forgotten? 40 seconds to go, and the Pittsburgh Panthers just 40 seconds away from their fourth win over a top 10 team in 1989. Georgetown with one timeout left, Pittsburgh with two. And Pittsburgh about the inbound. Here's a team 11 and 10, four and six in the Big East, all sophomores in the starting five. And they are about to add. How about that heads up play? Oh, oh, oh. Off of the rear end of one of the Georgetown players. How about that, Tommy? Everybody was denying the ball, 
had their back on the inbound man. That's an old schoolyard play. Look at Porter laugh. No place to really throw the ball, so why not throw it off the back of the defender? Stepped in bound and then caught everybody by surprise, headed up the court. Now I told you these were the smartest group of sophomores I ever saw play the game. And that was a perfect illustration, an impromptu play by Porter. And for Georgetown, a classic case of not using your head. <laughs> Somebody's got to be looking about where the ball is. You can't turn your back on the ball completely. Shorter misses the first. Brian Shorter with 14 points now. And he misses both. 33 seconds to go. Smith, that's for three. Anthony Allen chases down the rebound, gets it back to Jaron Jackson. And Smith, with Matthews in his face, hits the shot, no basket. And both Smith and Matthews are down. Foul is on number 22, Jason Matthews. His third personal. Watch John Thompson as the last play was developing. Wants a timeout, wants a timeout. Sean Miller. And doesn't get it. Well, they had, they have on the court now all people that can shoot the three-pointers. So Pitt will have to spread their defense around the white circle there and try and stop all those outside shots. And that's what that foul was all about. Smith was posted up there, and boy, did they come racing at him to try and shut it down. Charles Smith shooting two, eight of 12 today. Chevrolet most valuable player of the game today, Charlie Smith for Georgetown with 19 points. Jason Matthews for Pittsburgh with 24. And in their honor, a check in the amount of $1,000 donated to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in their chosen field of academic endeavor. Under 20 seconds now, Darrell Porter. And the foul underneath on Anthony Allen. That'll be his fifth. Well, I don't know whether he should have attacked the basket or not at that point. Run the clock down. That's their enemy right now. Not scoring two more points, even though he's going to shoot free throws. But he made a great smart play by putting it off the back of one of the Georgetown players. And now counterbalanced by not so smart a play. Anthony Allen still in. We've got him with five fouls. And now the substitution. Ronnie Thompson is coming in, and Anthony Allen will become the second player to foul out for Georgetown. He joins Alonzo Mourning on the bench, and Darrell Porter goes to the free throw line. When's the last time you saw that play, the inbounds play off somebody's hind end? I think I saw it last year. I forget what game, but it doesn't happen frequently. And that's, but that's the first time I ever saw it done against the pressure, pressure defense, where you have trouble inbounding the ball. 14 seconds to go, five-point lead. And it's now back to six. So two possessions could tie for Georgetown. Smith, too strong. Shorter with the rebound. And Shorter will again go to the free throw line. This has not been a fun week for Pittsburgh. They lost two in a row. They lost badly here. The Syracuse went on the road and played poorly at Providence. And Paul Evans has worked them hard. Boy, on Thursday, they were talking to us yesterday that it's probably the hardest practice they've had in a long time. But, and they look a little dispirited, including Paul Evans, but he can't be now because what an effort. I would say that you, you couldn't have coached a better ball game against this Georgetown team for what talent you have. And... He really, what he did today was beat Georgetown with, in essence, his favorite six players. And they acted like robots. And he must have been, had that plug out and plugged them in for some extra electricity at halftime. Shorter misses the second free throw. Smith comes up, puts it up. to 12 and 10. John Thompson's team falls to 18 and 3. So for Tommy Heitzel, this is Vern Lundquist 
saying so long from the Civic Arena where our final score, 79-74 Pittsburgh. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball, a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA champion.